I think there's a push in society to do certain things at a certain age and sometimes I think that can be challenging because ultimately what might make sense for like 98% of people might actually not make sense with you, right? Because it doesn't fit your specific unique situation. And I think when it comes to like buying a home or whether you should buy a home or not, that's the problem I think we have with this, which is this idea that everyone thinks that buying a home is the best solution for everyone, when in reality, it might not be the best decision for your specific situation. So when it came to me wanting to buy my first home, I think really the reason I wanted to buy my first home was just to use it as an indication of success. I think that's usually what most people's financial purchases when it comes to a home. So for me, buying a home was an important thing because I wanted to kind of show my parents that, hey, all this commitment they had done, all this hard work in terms of working two jobs and different things, that it wasn't for a waste. And I felt like buying a home was my way of telling them and society like, hey, their kid was being successful. So that was the emotional driver for me when it came to purchasing my first home. But again, I was hearing all this stuff that in addition to that, you know, it was a good investment. So I thought it was a good decision, but I didn't realize like I was using my home for so much more than just the investment. And it was, again, the emotion was what was driving me to make that transaction. So when I think of real estate today, I think of it as a great asset, mainly because of its ability to leverage. And what I mean by that is, when you buy a piece of real estate, you basically are taking your income that you make, let's say it's $60,000, whatever it is, and you potentially could leverage that income to be able to acquire an asset that's like $500,000 potentially, right? So that's what I mean by leverage. And because you have that ability to leverage that income, it means that the potential gains you can get if you're successful at it or if the market conditions kind of play in your favor, that $500,000 leverage that you did could potentially turn into an $800,000 leverage, right? So you get a huge gain from the ability to leverage a small piece of your income to acquire a really expensive asset. So that's really the only benefit and the main thing that I focus on when it comes to real estate now compared to when I bought real estate when I was young in my first home. It's literally leverage. That's all I pay attention to when it comes to real estate. Everything else doesn't really do anything for me but I'm paying attention to the ability to be able to leverage. And basic when I can leverage that, it means I can get economy of skills down the road, right? So let's talk about today, what I right now in this current environment in 2023, would I necessarily right now buy real estate? And here's kind of what I would say to the answer that question. So when it comes to answering that question today in 2023, again, the environment that we're in, and if this would also be the same answer I would give you during the COVID time when real estate prices were going up and I never want to say you got to buy a piece of real estate. I think this wouldn't change. And I don't think it will change for me, particularly in my market in British Columbia. I don't think it will change. My answer will change necessarily until house prices, again, come to a level where I think they're reasonable relative to the income level that it can support. But here's kind of be my answer. If I'm today starting out today, would I buy a principal resident today, right now in 2023? And I think there's four reasons why I would say, no, I wouldn't buy a principal resident today in 2023. And here they are. The first thing is just the price point. Like, Honestly, if you're starting out today, you need a pretty substantial income level to be able to afford a home in which you're not gonna be poor. So I think the price point alone will kind of eliminate me from being able to buy a home because I actually can't buy the home, right? Given the income that I'm making today, I wouldn't be able to buy a home, which is crazy because I was able to afford a home with less income, you know, when I first bought my first home, right? But today with a higher income, I can't afford the home prices today because again, house prices have far exceeded the level of income levels are able to support, right? So basically, if you're looking to buy a home today, or if I was looking to buy a home today, I would need additional support, such as from like family or friends to help me out with the down payment to get me into the home, which basically means that I wouldn't be able to buy a home myself individually, even if I may be working hard, and even if I make more money than I did when I first bought my first home, right? So the price point would be the first thing reason that I would say like, I wouldn't be able to buy a home to their principal resident because, well, I can't afford it. The price points are too expensive, right? I think one of the unfortunate things with the high home prices is that it's taken away the ability for you to be able to do things on your own. So basically now you're constantly having to get help from people, from parents or from loved ones because not that you're not willing to work hard or that you're not willing to sacrifice, the reality is just the price points are way too high. So you will basically have no choice but to get a parent involved or get you know, a family member involved. And for me, I think I wouldn't want to do that just because again, it takes away from my sense of accomplishment individually because now I feel like, oh, okay, like now I have to get help from a family member. And personally, just with money stuff, again, I like to accomplish money stuff on my own if I can do it. 
Um, I don't mind getting help from family and friends, but I think at the price point we're at, like the money that you have to get from your friends and family is so much. Like this is not just like, oh, you know, maybe you get your parents to write you a $5,000 check. No, your parents are probably gonna have to write you like a $300,000 check. That's a huge chunk of money to not feel like you have to pay back and figure out how you're gonna do it. And even if your parents are super cool and they're like, hey, really don't worry about it. You don't never have to pay us back. It just feels weird because you're like, oh, you know, that's 300,000, that's money they can maybe use for their retirement, or now they're taking on that debt because your parents probably don't have $300,000 in the bank, guys. They probably take it from their equity line of credit or from their equity from their home to pay you. So they're going into debt to try to help their kid out, right? So it just, I don't know, like I don't like that piece of it and the ability to not be able to accomplish home ownership on my own, I think would be the second reason why, again, I probably wouldn't want to buy a home in this market. The third reason why I wouldn't probably buy a home today is just the lifestyle that it would provide me. Like, again, the price point's really high. You need a lot of help from family members. Again, if I'm thinking about like trying to buy a home, then I have to think about what's the lifestyle like. And I think because home prices are so high, I wouldn't have the ability to do the lifestyle that I enjoy doing, which is I like to travel, I like to go out to eat, I like to do all these other things other than just stay at my home, right? And I think if you're buying a home today, the price points are so high that the lifestyle you're gonna get once you acquire the home may not be an enjoyable lifestyle. So you have this asset, which basically you're gonna sit on it so, you know, maybe you're like in retirement, but during that whole 25 plus years of you holding this asset, the quality of the life you have isn't anything meaningful because you're literally just doing the same thing over and over. You're going to work to get enough income to pay the mortgage debt. And then when you get the you pay the mortgage debt, you have nothing left over. Or maybe you have to actually go into additional debt because you don't have enough free cash flow to actually enjoy your life on a day to day basis. So I think that would be the third reason is the lifestyle that you can get at these current price points to me. I don't think it'd be worth it. And again, I'm speaking specifically in British Columbia, Vancouver area here, but I don't think it would necessarily be worth it because it'd be way too expensive. Maybe if you can get somewhere where it's a lower price point, where you have a little bit more freedom in terms of lifestyle that you can be afforded, even when you own a home, then sure, I would consider it. Like somewhere maybe like Calgary or maybe Saskatchewan, but again, you got like the weather, the coldness, all those different things, I don't know. But again, lifestyle would be one of those reasons why I wouldn't consider doing it at this point for number three. And the final reason why I think I wouldn't buy a principal resident today, even with all those different things, is just the idea that a principal resident isn't really an asset. Like the way we get told about it when we're younger is that, hey, this thing goes up in value. And that's fine, like yes, okay, a lot of things go up in value, but that doesn't mean that necessarily they're an asset. And I think for me, what I've realized now, knowing what I know about money, is that cash flow is really important, right? People chase assets when really we should be teaching kids and younger kids to pay attention to cash flow and specifically to pay attention to who's paying the cash flow. So let's flip this around and understand how the bank looks at your principal resident, right? The bank lends you money, right? Which then you take that money and then you buy this home. The bank does that because in addition to helping you get the home, they actually receive an income, right? So you go to work, right? And you're working your butt off to make sure that you can pay the bank back the money that they loaned you. If for whatever reason you can't actually pay them back or you default or you lose your job, the bank has an asset, in this case the home, which then they can try to sell to someone else, right? So when you look at it from a cash flow definition, that's why I say a principal resident isn't an asset because the asset from a cash flow definition should be something which pays you a cash flow stream. That home that you buy is an asset for the bank because you're the one paying the bank the cash flow stream, right? But for you, the home isn't really an asset, it's a liability. The only time it becomes a true asset for you would be when you paid off that loan, and then let's say you put someone in that home that you can rent it out, and then they pay your cash flow stream. So that's why, again, I wouldn't fall for that trap of saying like a principal resident is an asset. I think that argument doesn't make any sense when you think about it from a cash flow standpoint. Now, just because it's not an asset from a cash flow standpoint, that doesn't mean that buying a principal home doesn't have any other values. Like keep in mind, right? You need shelter, right? You need all these different benefits that come with having a home, creating memories, being able to raise your kid. Those are valid reasons to buy a home. The minute you start to trying to convince me that something emotionally is the same thing as a good financial decision, you and I butt head because I'm trying to separate those two things, right? You can tell me that you wanna buy principal residence because you wanna raise your family, because you wanna lay down some roots, and because you, you, know, you love this area because you grew up here. 
no problem with that i have no problem with that and you making that financial decision the minute you try to then say oh and also it's a good investment well that's where we get a little bit of debate right and that's why i'll go back for back and forth with you and say okay how are you defining an asset because the way i define an asset is really different right i use a cash flow definition and no matter what the price point is for the home at the end of the day if i'm the one paying someone the cash flow to me that's not an asset that's someone else's asset in which I'm paying them a cash flow stream, right? Now, the next question will be, okay, well, if you're not buying a home, then what are you doing, Brighton? I think if I'm not buying a home, I'm probably still going to be looking to buy real estate. <laughs> I know, like, stay with me. Look, guys, you have to understand that a lot of the wealth being created today in this world are from two primary assets. They're either in the stock market or they're in the real estate. But what you have to understand is how you actually make money in real estate. You make money in real estate because of the leverage capacity it has. But furthermore, you make money in real estate when you can get the mortgage paid down and when you're not the one giving up the cash flow. That's why a lot of people that are wealthy have real estate in their portfolio and they have apartment buildings or they have rental projects or whatever it is, but they're getting a cash flow stream because that's very important, right? They have the ability to still get the property increase that goes up when you live in the home as your principal resident. But more importantly, they're not the one actually paying the cash flow. They're not the one paying the debt. Someone else is paying the debt to pay off that mortgage that's associated with the debt that they've taken on. So basically what I'm saying is I wouldn't buy a principal resident, but if there's a means and an ability for me to acquire, say, a rental property, absolutely, I'm going to do that all day long because, again, I get to participate in the real estate market, but I get to do it in a smarter way, which means that I'm not the one having to necessarily pay all the cash flow stream, right? So maybe, you know, I can put someone in a rental building, say in Vancouver, and maybe rather than paying the entire mortgage, I would only have to pay 25% of that mortgage, and then I could go rent somewhere else and try to, you know, pay down that mortgage as quickly as I can by getting the help from someone else. And then maybe down the road, it will become my principal resident, or I may just keep it as a principal resident down the road. So that's the way I think I would think about it today compared to the way I thought about it when I was younger, which is different than when I would think about it when you're younger, which is you just get told that, hey, buying a home is a great asset. It goes up in value, but no one really explains to you like the cash flow portion of it because they try to keep that hidden for you because if you start to pay attention to cash flow, well, you start changing the way you think about an asset, right? And you start going through your balance sheet and all your net worth and go, okay, how many people am I paying a cash flow stream to? And how many people are paying me a cash flow stream? Because at the end of the day, the quality of the life that you have on this earth is gonna be dependent on how much cash flow, excess cash flow after your expenses, you have left over. So if you spend your entire cash flow paying someone else a cash flow, then your quality of life isn't gonna be that great compared to someone who ensures that they have a lot of excess cash flow that they're getting each month, which is gonna allow them to take on more experiences in life and enjoy life to the fullest because they're not paying everyone their cash flow, right? So that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope that's a little bit helpful for those of you who are concerned today, should I buy a home? And gives you a little bit of thought process kind of go through to decide whether you should buy a home or whether you shouldn't buy a home. If you find that helpful, do me a huge favor guys. Make sure you like the video and of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribing. And again, if you're interested in the merch, make sure you check out the link in the description below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.